Hey everyone, my name is David Silverberg. I'm the head of the training department here at Practice Panther, and today we're going to be covering anything and everything dealing with expenses. So to start off, we're just going to create a simple expense, which we can do either in the white new button from any page of the software, by hitting the white button and hitting expenses. However, if we do it this way, it's not going to show us which content and matter we are inside of, so we're going to have to go ahead and pick which content and matter we want to relate it to. Uh, but the fastest and easiest way for me that I got used to was to either be was to be in the uh, matter itself that we want to list the expense for, and then you can either use the expenses tab here with the green new expense button, or use the green button on the top right and click expense. Uh, this way, this expense will automatically be listed for this client and matter without me having to do anything else. Now we do have two different types of expenses on Practice Panther. They're either going to be a soft cost or a hard cost expense, and I'm going to go over both. A soft cost is going to be one of those things that you uh, use on a pretty daily basis uh, that, that you um, have over time being used. And it's either going to be something like mileage, like gas being used over time, paper, um, maybe court parking, little expenses that you uh, incur on a day-to-day -day basis that you want to just simply keep a log of and make sure that your client pays you for. Uh, now these are not going to be office expenses in the sense that we are not using Practice Panther for our electricity bill or our plumbing or rent or payroll. Those types of expenses will be kept in QuickBooks Online. But uh, the actual case expenses, like things you're using for the case, you can go ahead and track here this way. So again, we're going to make a soft cost and we're going to say in this case it was $20 for uh, we'll say court parking and now I am going and describing it here because this does appear in the invoice to the client to see so you do want to be careful what you write but we also have categories and these are much like the time entry items right so these are basically the names or titles of these expenses here now I did create uh, a court parking category ahead of time but anytime you need to you can create your own categories by hitting manage categories here. This is where the manage categories page looks like and you can go ahead at any time and edit or delete any of the existing ones or add a new category like this and we'll just say uh, something like uh, we'll just say something like court parking too just to give an example here and make sure you hit save on the top. Now you might have noticed those codes, these item codes, these E codes and the null. Null means I made it myself. Uh, but the item codes are essentially things that people that use leads style invoicing will really care about. If you don't know what lead style invoicing is or these codes are really unfamiliar to, it, to you, you don't really have to worry about it. It's not gonna change anything uh, for you or your system. But if you do care about lead style invoicing, you will want to go to the invoice options page in your settings to get that turned on. And uh, that's what these codes are really for. But not to worry, we're going to go ahead and pick court parking as our category. We also have expense reporting. I'm going to show you later on based on these category types. Uh, now you can also, if you have a picture receipt on file, go ahead and upload it to this expense. Uh, this is not going to appear on the invoice for your client to see. It's not going to take up space in the invoice for whatever for at all. Uh, but it does at least keep the expense tracked here on the expense if you ever needed to pull it up uh, on record or anything. Uh, this billable question right here is whether or not you want to actually include this expense in your billable bubble and on your invoices. If not, you just want to keep a record of it for your own purposes. You can go ahead and keep, click that to no. We're going to leave it as yes. And uh, build by who recorded this expense and any additional notes that you might want to keep about the expense at all it's all up to you uh, this does this box here does not appear on the invoice for your client to see and uh, so you can keep any kind of private notes that you might need to there and click save all your expenses for this matter will get listed under the expense category here we also have a multiple expense button right here you can click on anytime you fall behind on uploading these expenses these are really just for the soft cost expenses but you can upload up to 10 at one time now I'm gonna go ahead and show you a hard cost but before I do that I just want you to take a special note that this soft cost expense simply did one thing it created an expense item here in the expense tab which added the $20 billable amount here to this bubble now when I do another expense this one I'm gonna make a hard cost instead 
and hard costs are more for those maybe not necessarily bigger expenses but the things that you really need to swipe your card for or write a check for you're hiring someone a mediator a private investigator you're paying court fees with a check or something like that uh, you're gonna go ahead and record a hard cost for that instead so in this case I'm gonna say it was 250 and I hired a private investigator which we do have a code for there now one thing you may have noticed and I'll show you real quick when we have it at soft cost this is what it looked like before and when we pick hard cost a new section called payment details actually appears and this is because a hard cost will be actually creating two things one is that billable expense that we did with the soft cost same thing but the other thing it's creating is an actual negative payment to whichever operating account that you choose here this is so you can actually keep a log of what you've spent on this case and compare that to what you've actually brought in so how did you make this payment did you use cash check card wire transfer whatever it is uh, if we pick check another section will appear called check details where we'll actually be able to pick the payee for that check and we can write that check directly out of practice panther if we choose to by leaving to print marked as yes now all the things we set to print will be set on another page i'll take you to that in just a second um, where you can print out all your checks in one shot in this case i'm going to say i hired my private investigator dick tracy and if i want this notes on the payment as well i want to say hired private investigator Dick Tracy and what do I want my, my check number to be for this one one two three four do I need a receipt load it if I do and save now if I want to go ahead and print that check all I have to do is click on the print checks button which is found right here or in the payments tab or under more bank accounts and print checks You'll also notice that the paid bubble updated and is now negative 250 and we have a expense in the payments list here for that hard cost. Now this payment is directly linked to this expense. So I won't be able to delete the payment unless I delete this expense. I can also open the expense to see that payment and this expense at any time. If I want to write that check, I have those print check buttons that I showed you before or I can hit the more button here and go to print checks just like this. This will take us to our print checks page. Pick the account you want to print checks from. I already have another expense here from another case but I'm going to just check off this one expense and we're going to say my check number was one two three four. You can pick what type of checks you have whether it's voucher or standard and if you don't have any checks or if you're not sure if yours are compatible with ours you can hit the order checks button over here on the top right to order the QuickBooks checks that we are completely compatible with anytime once you have your checks loaded in your printer just go ahead and hit print it'll open up a PDF file that will be completely matched up with those QuickBooks checks and you can right click and hit print find your printer and go ahead and print it out next up we're gonna actually go back in to our expense matter here and generate an invoice for these expenses so to do this you can either hit the generate invoice button here if you see that or hit the green new button and invoice this way either way works make sure you have expenses checked off and you pick a date range that you want to actually pull those expenses from say you only want to pull your November expenses you could do last month or leave it at all time to pull everything possible then click generate invoice this is going to take you to your invoice construction page where you can make any last minute changes on literally any section of the uh, invoice here including the quantity price to affect the subtotal as you need go down and hit save this is what the invoice looks like just so you know we have six different themes that you can choose from and your expenses will get listed here in one section and get summarized down here now let's go ahead and run some reports for these expenses. To do this, just hit more on the top and then reports. From here, we're gonna hit the expense tab here on the left and pick exactly which uh, report we'd like to view. Either we can see all of our expenses by contact, by matter, but most people I see use the by category option a lot. And you can use the filters on the top 
to actually narrow down the information to just what you want to see. Let's say I just want to see my stuff that I've actually been paid for. Uh, you can also include your contact tags, if you have any of those, or your matter tags, to really narrow this list down to certain types of contacts that you have expenses for, or certain types of cases that you have expenses for, what date range, and how you want to group these expenses. So you can have all that to adjust this graph and adjust the listed items below as needed. Now on every single expense list and every other list on Practice Panther, anytime you have any items like this in a row, you'll have the options on the top right of that list to choose columns. Here's where you can actually pick what information about these items you want to see or not. And whenever you're satisfied with their columns, you can actually export this list to Excel or to PDF as needed for any additional reporting or if you need to print these out. Now, last thing I want to cover today is what happens over in QuickBooks. So I don't have my personal account linked right now, but if I go over to our amazing help center, we can go ahead and search for QuickBooks or items, oops, not spelling that right, items uh, and categories. So that's just the name of the article that I'm trying to pull up right now. And just so you guys know, when we do integrate with QuickBooks Online, all invoices and payments do get moved over there as well. Now, time entries and expenses also get piggybacked on those invoices moving over to QuickBooks. Once they're in QuickBooks, these items can all be found, whether they're for time entries or expenses, under the Sales tab, under Products and Services, as you see here. And at any time, if you want to adjust where that money is being allocated, you can go ahead and edit those individual items in QuickBooks side and change the chart of accounts that it gets listed under. By default, these uh, items are all getting listed under a uh, chart of accounts called Panther Sales, which does show as an income account. But if you have your expenses, you want to go ahead and change it to an expense account ex instead, and this is how you do it. So that in the future, when this same item comes over to QuickBooks, it automatically will go over to the correct chart of accounts as needed. So that's it today for all things considered with expenses. If you have any additional questions involving expenses, always feel free to check out our help center anytime. Tons of articles and uh, uh, videos on pretty much all of our features can be found there anytime. It's getting better every day. Or you can hit the bubble on the bottom right if you can't find the answer you're looking for in the help center and let our support team know and we'll be happy to help you out every step of the way. Thank you so much for watching and take care.